Hello everyone, welcome to in MicroSQL Server. My name is Steve Bishop, and in today's video we're going to be talking about creating relationships in SQL Server quickly. Now, uh, as part of my Access, my advanced course in Access, I was talking about how to create relationships and kind of importing from Access and putting those relationships in SQL Server. But in this video, this is just strictly a how-to for everybody who's interested in SQL Server about how to create a quick process of creating a relationship in SQL Server. So let's go ahead and hop out here and go to our database. Now I've got the Northwind database loaded up here in my uh, in my SQL Server. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the database diagrams folder under my Northwind database and select new database diagram. Now once this opens up I need to add the tables that I'm going to be joining. So we're going to do customers and orders. Now these two tables already have a relationship. So I just kind of wanted to show you what this looks like in the diagram. If you already have a relationship they're going to show up in this diagram uh, already for you so you don't have to worry about maybe accidentally recreating a relationship that you may already uh, have put in place. So this is already set up. These are my relationships. Actually I kind of want to reverse this way. Here, here we go. Okay, so these are this is the relationship that I've got between my customers and orders and I can right click on the line here, pull up the properties of it, and I can take a look and see what the specifications are of this uh, relationship. And that's all fine and good. What about my employee ID? Because this is a foreign key that points back to the employee that is assigned to this order. What I can do is I can go to this white space over here, right click and click add table. And then I'm going to select the employees table because that's the table I need to add, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it here, close this down, move it over here so I can see it. And now here comes the very easy part. I need to join my two, my two tables, orders and employees. The employee ID is the foreign key and ID is the primary key, right? So I need to join on these two uh, fields here. Well, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna select, I'm just gonna click on the margin here next to my primary key and I'm gonna drag it over here to my foreign key and drop it. And up comes this window that asks me about my relationship. What do I want to name it? And it's verifying that my primary key table is the employees table with ID as the primary key. And my foreign key table is the orders table with the foreign key of employee ID. That's all correct. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on yes. Okay. So now, if I just expand this tables and columns specification, you can see that's essentially the information I just put in there. If I need to go back and change it, I can click on this ellipsis and change it if I need to, including the relationship name if I wanted. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave that where it is. I'm going to leave the enforce for replication and enforce foreign key constraint set to yes. I would say that in 99.99999% of the time, you will want to maintain both of those things. Just keep them at yes. When it comes to insert and update specifications, I'm going to go ahead and expand this out here. We have the delete rule and the update rule. Well, essentially what this means is, uh, first and foremost, if the deletion happens, of a record in my employees table. So let's say I, I delete the second employee in my employees table. Well, what should then happen to the orders table if I delete that information from the employees table? Because if I, if I have this foreign key relationship between these two tables where I've got an employee uh, ID value that points to a record inside of my employees table, and then I delete that record that it points to, I would have an orphaned record in my orders table. I'd have an employee ID value that doesn't point to any actual employee record. Or even worse, what if I, you know, delete that record, create a new one, but it happens to give the same ID. Now I've got the wrong employee associated with that particular order. That's really not good. So we need to do something to handle that. Well, the delete rule is essentially uh, what would happen to the orders table, to all the records in the orders table, 
where uh, the foreign key value pointed to a record in the employees table and that employee was deleted. What am I going to do in my orders table? Well, you have a few different options. You can either do no action, so just go ahead and leave it orphaned, or you can cascade the change. So if you delete the employee, that would also delete all of the orders associated with that employee. So that's one option, okay? The other option, uh, you could do you could set the value to null. So in my orders table, the employee ID value would be changed to null when that employee is removed. That's probably the best uh, best solution here so that we still keep the order, but we just don't associate it now with any employee. And that also means that we can run a query later on on the orders table and look for all of the nulls and we can see all of the orphaned orders, all the orders that don't currently belong to an employee and maybe we could reassign them, okay? Uh, you could also go from null, you could also change it to a default value. So if I had a default value for employee ID, say like zero or 100 or one or whatever the default value was for that employee ID column, you could change it to the default if the employee record that it's associated with got deleted, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as null. The update rule, I'm just gonna go, it is basically similar to the delete rule. It just means if the value of the primary key for the employee changed, so if it was say 100, but it got changed to 1000, so it's the same employee, they just changed the, the primary key, well, what would you want to have happen on the orders table? Well, I would think that probably the most likely option is you'd want to cascade that change. You'd want the change, so if the value went from 100 to 1,000 on the employee table, you probably want to also change the employee ID value to 1,000, okay? So that's what cascading would do there. I could, again, set it to null or default, but I think cascade probably makes the most sense. And again, uh, one last opportunity here to change the name of your uh, of your foreign key relationship, and you could even add a description if you wanted to. I'm going to just go ahead, and go ahead and click OK there, and that is all I need to do in order to set up my relationship. Now, that was a full explanation of just about you know everything that you need to know uh, about the setting up of the relationship. I'm going to show you just how fast and easy this really can be to create one of these relationships. Okay, uh, I also have on here a shipper ID. So let's go ahead and add the shipper table. Let's go down shippers, add that. There's currently no relationship here between these two things. I'm gonna go ahead and add one right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to shipper ID. I can do this in the reverse. I can select the foreign key and associate it with the primary key that way. Everything is right on that screen by default. I'm going to change the rules here from delete to null and cascade and OK, and we're done. <laughs> That's how fast it is to create that relationship. And it exists on my orders uh, on my orders table. So if I, you know, if I go ahead and save this diagram, um, you're welcome to go ahead and save it. You don't have to. I'm just going to go ahead and save the diagram so I can work on it later. But now if I go to the orders table, you can see in the design, go to the relationships, you can see there are all of the relationships that that orders table has, including that brand new shippers and the brand new employees relationships that I just set up. So there you go. Uh, that's how you can quickly add through the diagram window here, add uh, and create new foreign key relationships. Anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me uh, your questions in the comment section below. And always, as always, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe.